Be under. What's up, man? Salute. All right, man. Let's get ready to do this thing. So today, man, we're going to talk about the art of being selfish. In other words, 10 alpha lessons to apply to your life. This year, not next year, this year. Because the bottom line is the main thing that we need in our lives is to figure out what works best for us and then add people to our lives who fit into that scenario that we have already found out works best for us. And that's the main thing we're here to do. That's the main thing we want to do. That's the main thing we want to do. And today we're going to try to cover a couple of steps, man, that will make you do that. Again, the running title of this show is Put Yourself First or You Will Always End Up in Last Place. But we're going to talk about some alpha principles and alpha precepts that you can apply to your life. Ones that I apply to my own life. And I'm not perfect. There are some of these that I'm just applying to my life now for for a, a, another run at it. So let's talk about it, man, because I do not profess to be perfect. These are things that I apply, you apply. The ones that we don't apply, we need to start applying them. There is nothing better than to always understand that you have to prioritize yourself first because without you, whoever else you're worrying about don't matter no more, right? If you die right now, who matters in the world at that? To you. You can't affect anything if you don't take care of yourself first. This is the true essence of what masculinity means. Big Mo, salute, salute. Appreciate the dub, man. Appreciate the dub. Big Mo say, man, just passing the plate around. B-O-N-G-L-G, ready to go to school. Let's get it. Salute to you, brother. I appreciate it. The brother Randy Irvin in the building. Appreciate the dub. Salute to the Alpha Sphere. Got main wonder. Salute, B-O-A, doing my pull-up. Listen to you all lives, man. Hit him, hit him, bro. Hit him, hit him. Roberto Jimenez, my brother, salute. Good to see you back in the joint, man. What's up, OG? Salute to you, bro. Salute, salute. That's a good brother right there, man. Folk, getting, getting his money, getting his, getting about his business, man. Focusing on his life. Jose Brent, salute, man. Appreciate the five bones. All right, man. Let's get ready to do this right quick. Now, the first thing I want to say is this. Let's go ahead and get this one out the way because somebody's going to say somebody. We ain't only get, we ain't got to always talk about how you need to apply. The principles and precepts are the most high to your life. We only talk about, but let me tell you what I want you to do. If you haven't tried it yet, if you ain't, oh, well, I don't even want all that religion and all that. Okay, cool. I'm not going to try to convince you about the difference between religion and spirituality. But I'll tell you this. For all the grinding you do, for all the focus you have on your grind, here's what I want you to try this year. Try applying morality and righteousness to your grind and focus. See, your grind and focus is going to do what it's going to do. Grind and focus is going to pay off. But if you apply morality and righteousness to your grind and focus, watch what happens. Just try it. Just try it, man. That's all I'm saying. Give it a shot. If you're not doing it already, try applying morality and righteousness to your grind and focus. And we're going to cover some of these things. Everything on this list feeds into the mindset of a righteous man who has elevated himself above doing things that resonate with the world at large, because things that resonate with the world at large are things that keep everybody in a box. You understand what I'm saying? You know what resonates with the world at large? Having the same job for 62 years or until you're 62. Retiring, hoping there's enough money left for you. You know what I'm saying? Hoping there's enough money left for you. Taking a job where you can never stack up enough for retirement, so you got to hope there's enough money left for you in Social Security. Well, let me tell you like this. All of us in here right now, by the time you get to retirement age, there ain't going to be no social security left for you. So stop thinking you're going to retire like your grandmama did, like your granddaddy did. You're not going to do it like your parents did. That's over for you. Cut it out. Stop living in the dream world. Now, when you apply that morality and righteousness to your grind and focus, you'll understand that one thing takes place. You start to add some peace of mind to your progress. So let me tell you what peace of mind does. Every step of the process of progress is not an easy step. You're not just, oh, you know, you, you're not, you're not a smurf. Ba, la, 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 You're not a smurf. Just smurfing along through the forest, hoping you don't run into Gargamel. Every step 
is going to be a tedious step. Every step has to be carefully placed because there's always going to be an option of two places for you to step. But when you have that peace of mind, just in case you make a misstep, it's not going to be the end of the world for you. Peace of mind means that peace is yours to possess. Nothing can take it away from you. But in order to do that, you have to apply morality and righteousness to your grind and focus. Otherwise, you can forget peace of mind. Now, if you don't need peace of mind, fine. You want to be one of you guys that got to go drinking liquor every day after work, or you got to be blowing trees on the weekend, or you got to be popping pills, whatever you got to do, whatever you need to do. If you need to reply, uh, uh, rely on some type of substance to get your peace, cool. Because that's peace of body. That's not peace of mind. When whatever you're inebriated on, when that effect leaves, guess what? Your peace is gone again. I'm telling you how to focus on peace of mind, man. Peace of mind will put you where you need to be and keep you from being in a situation where you don't understand what's going on in life because you're too concerned about the things that aren't going on in life. You're too focused on what you don't have. You're too focused on what you're not doing. You're too focused on what you haven't accomplished. Peace of mind keeps you focusing on things that bring you peace. So you don't even pay attention to those other things. Even your enemies. When a man's ways pleaseth God, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Who doesn't want to be in that state? Well, you're so cold and so tight with the most high man, even your enemies want peace. Let's get into this thing. Another thing. Let, 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 let's not get into this thing. Let's keep on this path. You can't be alpha without God. Let's go ahead and nip that in the bud now. There ain't no alpha without the most high. That's when guys come around talking about, well, alpha is this. And alpha always have to be seen. Alpha, those people don't know what an alpha male is, man. Let me tell you the dumbest people on the planet. People that look for the term alpha male and go to Webster's Dictionary or Google to find the definition. The definition of an alpha male is in the word of the most high. The more you apply it, the more alpha you become. I say again, the more you apply it, the more alpha you become. So anybody who says, man, I don't open that Bible, that dude ain't no alpha. He can't be because you can't be alpha without God. You can act like you're alpha. You can you can you can be a certain way with women. You know, you can you can make some money, but you can't be alpha. Without God, because God is the alpha and the omega. See, he ain't say nothing about being the sigma, did he? Had to give y'all Sigma something to eat on. Y'all always trying to eat on alphas. Considering y'all don't know what it is. You know the funny thing is? When you have peace of mind, the things that people say don't even make it to your ears. You literally have to go find them. You literally have to go find them. They don't make it to you. There's a barrier around you to protect you from war when you have peace of mind. And peace of mind comes solely from applying morality and righteousness to your grind and focus. That's where it comes from. Now, let's go ahead and get to the top of this thing. So let's talk about finances. Because as alpha men, we all want our money to be right. But let me tell y'all something. Stop focusing on being a millionaire. You ain't got to be a millionaire. I tell you what, right now, if you make at least 10K a month, put a one in the chat if you want to. If you don't, I mean, if you ain't worried about nobody knowing about it, I ain't worried about nobody knowing. So y'all put a one in the chat if you make at least 10 bands a month. We ain't gonna go no further than that. If you make at least 10 bands a month, put a one in the chat. Because we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this from the perspective of men who started from nothing. I want y'all to think about nothing. Put a two in the chat if you started from nothing. If you started from nothing, if you started from the bottom, now you're here. Put a two in the chat right now if you started from the bottom. Because everybody may not want to disclose their income. But you might well put it in. That IRS knew it. You know what I'm saying? The IRS already know your income. They're the only people you need to be worried about knowing your income. The IRS, man. 
if you started from the bottom, that means you started from nothing, homie. If you start from the bottom, don't you know 10 bands a month is a whole hell of a lot of money? Long as you ain't comparing yourself to people that are in professions where the entry level, do you know that the, the, the base salary, the minimum wage in the NFL is $250,000? I think the minimum wage in the NBA is like four fifty eight, dollars something like that. The minimum wage is almost half a million in the NBA. We're not comparing ourselves to people whose minimum wage is a half a million dollars because the truth be told, the majority of women and people that we're going to come into contact with ain't in the same circles with those guys. Those guys run in different circles. So as men, we got to stop comparing ourselves to people whose circles we don't even run in and people we don't be around who run in their circles. But we started from the bottom. So 10 bands is a noble, a noble goal for a man who started at the bottom. A noble goal. Now, just think if you set your sights on 20 bands. The goal, the goal of a man, the goal to financial freedom is low. It's 20 bands a month. 20 bands a month give you, gives you financial freedom. Think about this. 20 bands a month. In a year, you could be debt free. That's 240 bands in a year. Let's go ahead. You got to pay Uncle Sam something. You're going to have to pay Uncle Sam about uh, between state and fed, depending on what state you're in, you're gonna end up paying, man. Uh, if you do everything right, man, about forty. If you ain't got no kids to claim none of that, maybe somewhere around there. Just depend on your state for real. I can't really say what you'll pay. It just depend on your state because state gonna knock you for real. Depending on where you are, some states won't knock you. Florida, Texas, Utah, Washington State. There's a couple of states that won't knock you at all. But when you think about it, man. When you make 10K a month, you make more than the majority of the people in the United States. You make more than the majority of the people in the United States. There is no country, there is no state in the United States where middle class is 200000 a year. Middle class in every single state for a family of two, for a family of four, middle class is less than 200000 in every state in this country. The highest states are like California, uh, I think maybe New York. Those states go up to, you know, 168, 172, somewhere around there on the upper end. But no state has to, requires that you hit 200K a month before you're middle class. You know what that means? That means if you hit 200K a month, you're upper middle class, you're above middle class. 20 bands a month gives you 240,000 a year. That's a noble goal. That's a noble financial goal. Now, with that 20 bands a month, okay, you want to drive some fly? Lease one fly whip. Don't buy no cars, man. If you're going to buy a car, buy your little cash car that you ride around. Buy your Honda Accord or Toyota Camry or something that you ride around in your daily driving. But if you want something nice, do not buy an expensive vehicle. Lease it. You'll be surprised how many millionaires, man, multimillionaires, lease their cars. They drive Bentley every time a new Bentley body come out, they flip it, but they lease them all. Lease it. Lease your whip. If you lease it, if you buy it, guess what? Your name, the same way your name on it when you when you go in and get that loan on it, the same way your name is on it when you lease it. You still got to get the insurance on it and in your name. You still got to do all that and still come back registered to you. So just do it. Lease your whip. Kill, kill a whole lot of the, the extra repair stuff on it. Lease a whip, man. Another thing. When you lease that whip and own one practical vehicle, you want to live somewhere comfortable. I'm not saying go buy a mansion, but if you want to, you can go live somewhere comfortable. Live inexpensively comfortable. Know what that means? Get the utmost level of comfort you can in the most in the most inexpensive package. So these major cities, man, what's the purpose of living in a major? A major city is a money pit. You know what I'm saying? I've been thinking about, man, dipping over to the ATL. Man, but I'll be honest with you, man, ATL is a money pit. Compared to somewhere like New York or, or maybe L.A., you know, it's not very expensive, but it's getting up there. It's starting to creep up a little bit. It's very expensive. When I can go somewhere like, like Durham, North Carolina or Charlotte, North Carolina, and live a little bit cheaper. Get a whole bunch of house for a little bit of net. You understand? I can go to Miami. I can go to Miami and spend, you know, $2 million on, on, a, on some on the water. You understand? Or I can go to Savannah, Georgia and spend a little bit less for some on the water. You know what I'm saying? 
I can go to Galveston, Texas, spend some a little bit less on the water. And then in Texas, pay no state taxes. That's another thing. You got to think about, we got to stop thinking about just how to make money. And we got to think about how to grow money, how to preserve money, how to take care of money. And, and pay off all that dumb debt. Pay off dumb debt. What's dumb debt? High credit card bills. And that's dumb debt. The purpose of having a credit card is not to run up the, it's not to run the bill up. If you got to run the bill up on your credit, man, let me tell you something. If you got a maxed out credit card, man, you living beyond your means. Because the credit card ain't meant for you to max out. It's meant for you to keep inside 30%. I keep mine inside 16%. 16% expenditure on mine every month. I pay it right off. Never made a minimum payment. Never. I've never left a balance on my credit card ever. You know what I do with it? I use it for gas. You know what I'm saying? Use it to book a hotel when I go out of town. You know what I do when I end up leaving the hotel? I end up going to the desk. I end up paying with my car. And I end up paying, like, paying straight out. You know, I end up paying with a bank card, debit card. Go ahead and get it off that credit card, man. These are the type of things I do because it's still going it's still gonna hit your credit card and look like you're using it, but then it's going to come right back off. Credit Bureau can't tell that. They just see that the money, ain't, that the balance been paid off. See, these type of things are, are what you do. You what you learn when you're around people that really have money. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you like this, man. The goal is to have somebody around you who's been rich for 20 years or more. Because in 20 years, you go through a whole lot. You see a whole lot of different changes in how money is made and, and how money is saved and, and the price of the dollar, the value of the dollar and the value of all other things. How much you, you see it. You see a whole bunch of different things. So I say, man, you got to have some people around you that's been getting money for 20 years or more. New money don't matter to me. Hell, I got new money. So when it comes to new money, like all my financial advice comes from old money. It just does. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just take, I get all my financial advice from old money because I don't want to be the richest man in the world. So I don't care about, you know, getting rich quick and getting super rich and being, I don't care about that. That don't matter to me. Because every day I still want to get up and grind. I don't want to be so rich that I ain't got to do nothing no more. I still want to get up and grind every day. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. Man, you see me on 100 million, man. I'm not going to get up and do nothing every day. Man, I'm going to listen. I'm going to be around the world, man, trying to buy up something. I'm finna be trying to take over some, some territories, man. That's what I'm gonna do. Give me a hundred million, man. I'm finna be in some countries, man, trying to buy some land, some islands, some capitals, some, some whatever. So I say that to you, man. Get rid of that dumb day. And here's the thing if you're not an athlete, rapper, or D boy, you should look like one. What's the purpose of looking like a rapper if you're not one? You don't make that kind of income. I just, I just, somebody sent me a clip of an interview with the rapper Lil Baby, man. He charged 100, he charged 100K for 16 bars. Every cameo, he, every, every cameo verse, 100 bands. He do 10 of them a month, that's a meal in a month. Come on, bro. Not many of us make a meal in a month. So, athletes, we talking about, man, like I said, guys who the minimum wage is, is four, almost $500,000, man. No, nobody should look like a rapper if you if you're not a rapper, athlete, or or, or D boy, you shouldn't look like one. It's dumb to look like one. Cause here's the thing: the people that are out there trying to jack, they look for people that look like that. I, somebody sent me a story, man, a couple a uh, couple of months ago, no, a couple of weeks ago rather, about these two guys, man. They were out in California, man. They were on, I can't remember what this what this um what this road is they were on, man. But it's a very popular road, man, in in a in a very upscale area. Of um of LA man, they were out there, man. Listen, they pulled up to valet. They literally walked. They they pulled up to valet. They walked out to valet rather, and man, somebody somebody rode up on a man, drew down on, in front of the hotel, in front of a swank hotel, drew right down on a man, made him take off their chains and everything. Now I ain't saying that it happened to you, but why do that? Why put yourself in that position? Why put yourself in a position to be targeted by people who think you're somebody you're not? Real money is low key. I tell you again, real money is low key. I ain't never seen Mark Cuban look like a billionaire ever. I seen Diddy look like one. 
we got to stop thinking that we have to represent some type of hip hop culture or something. That's not what we do. Also, do nothing with the intent of impressing women. There is nothing you should do with your money with the intent of, of impressing women. If you buying a car so you can impress women, don't buy it. If you shopping out buying clothes, man, so you can impress women, don't buy them. If you're looking at some jewelry, man, so you can impress women, don't buy it. If you're looking at a career, man, so you can impress women, don't buy it. Anything you buy to impress women has no value. Because the things that they are impressed by don't have value. You show a woman some, you show a woman your stock portfolio, man. She don't care nothing about that. She's trying to see how that's going to equate to her going shopping. So never do anything, anything to impress women. Because that's always a dead end. Also, man, understand how to offset your tax responsibility. You know what I'm saying? The more money you make, the more you will need it. Trust me, you're going to need it. You're going to need to understand how to offset those taxes, man. You know, when, when you ain't got no money, you say, man, rich people need to pay more taxes. Rich people need to pay more taxes. But when you start getting money, you'd be like, man, I got to pay this much taxes? Man, let me, let me find some of these shelters. And then you see the value of shelters. Nobody sees it. I say this to you as well, man. Keeping up with the Joneses is dumb. Let's let's talk about the term. Let's talk about the phrase keeping up with the Joneses. What does that even mean? Keeping up with the Joneses. Who are the Joneses? Like we live our lives based on stupid sayings like that. Keeping up with the Joneses is dumb unless your name is Jones. And then if your name is Jones, you ain't got to keep up with the Joneses. All you got to do is keep up with yourself. Just set the trend. Oh, you, if you if your name is Jones, you set the trend. If your name ain't Jones, why are you trying to keep up with the Joneses? Keep up with the Hancocks. Like Bud. Salute, Bud. Appreciate you. Mr. O. Salute, dog. Happy New Year. Appreciate all the game. Salute to you, Mr. O. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate it. Big Mo, salute, man. Man, I was homeless and grinding and growing for the last 13 years. Live my best life would not leave easy. I'll pray to the most high. For sure, man. All praise to the most high, man. <clears throat> Y'all know your boy will hit battling the bug, man. Y'all. <clears throat> so I might end up having to close that mic off so I can cough a little bit, man. So <sighs> all right, man. They get back into this thing. So when you think about it, man, you got to you got to keep yourself in the proper headspace to do the things that you need to do. And one of the things you need to do is protect yourself. You need to protect your health. You need to protect your wealth. They say health is wealth. Now, nah, health is health. Wealth is wealth. You got to separate the two and protect them both. See, we don't need simple sayings like that. Health is wealth. Yes, I've said it. You've said it. But health ain't wealth. Health is health. Because you can be healthy as hell and ain't got no money. So let's not say health is wealth. No, health is health. You need to be healthy and you need to be wealthy. If you ain't wealthy, you can't really enjoy being healthy. And if you ain't healthy, you sure can't enjoy being wealthy. We're going to separate the two. Health is over here. Wealth is over there. We're going to do both separately. They're not one big thing. And let me tell you something, man. And this is one of the most masculine mindsets I can tell you, man, that I've adapted in my life, that um, that I've adapted to and adopted in my life, that uh, that do me the most service. When God blesses me, he blesses me. These are my blessings based on my relationship with God, based on his purpose for me in this life. Now, I can help people if I want to, but I'm not obligated to go out here and just because people ain't got nothing, spread my blessings around. That's not what God put me here to do. 
See, if you take on that mindset that that's what you're here to do, you'll be like those women who let everybody in their family hit them up until they broke. And then when they broke, they realized, can't nobody help me. Well, guess what? If you was logical, like a man is, you would have thought before you start giving these people. Now, if I give all my money to these people, I know they broke because they keep hitting me for money. When I go broke, I ain't got nobody I can rely on. You put yourself in that situation if you believe that what you receive based on what you achieve it's meant for you to allow other people to relieve you of. And that's just not the case. You help those you want to help, man. If the spirit of the most high moves you to help someone, help them. If it don't, don't put no pressure on yourself. You ain't got to be a yes man in any situation in your life. Only situation I plan to be a yes man in, man, is the mission that the most I have me on. And I ain't gonna lie, sometime, man, I'm human. So sometimes I be like, you sure, Lord? You sure about doing? Ooh, woo. Man. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Woo. Why? But it always turns out wonderfully. But as a man, you know, I'm always like, whoa, that seemed kind of tough right there. But I'm gonna do it because I know, not even, I'm gonna be honest with you, not even that I know the benefit of it. It ain't even about the benefit of it. I know the punishment of not doing it. You know what I'm saying? I live with a healthy fear of the Lord, man, and you should too. Now, another thing, health. Don't worry about eating clean until you stop eating dirty. Don't worry about eating clean until you stop eating dirty. You cannot eat clean if yesterday you ate dirty. You know what I'm saying? You cannot be a piece of pot pie Apple pie, sweet potato pie, McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell eating jelly, and then turn around the next day and eat clean. Before you start eating clean, you got to stop eating dirty. Because before you start eating clean, you need to detox yourself off eating dirty. If you know you eat like crap, just stop eating like crap. Man, don't even worry about working out yet. Because you eat like crap, I know you don't work out. And if you do, your workout ain't worth nothing. Don't eat. Don't worry about it. Start one step at a time. Stop eating like crap. Stop eating like crap. Because when you stop eating like crap, if you eat clean, once you start working out, the results going to come quick. So first, it, the, listen, I know you've heard, you can't out-train a bad diet. So you can work out till you're blue in the face. Unless you got six hours a day and the energy to burn for six hours, you can, then maybe you can out-train a bad diet. Most of us don't have that type of time or energy. But if you eat clean, the workout is going to do what it's supposed to do. You understand what I'm saying? So don't worry about trying to jump in and do all this stuff at the same time. The first thing you got to do, man, is master what you put in your body. Because what you put in your body is what comes out. You put crap in it, crap comes out. In every way. So focus on getting rid of that. And here's the thing. Start getting enough sleep. Do y'all know, man, that if you go to sleep after midnight, man, your brain don't have a chance to rest? Your brain's prepared to rest, man, when the sun goes down. Y'all ain't never heard that? Your brain is prepared to rest when the sun goes down. And some guy still be up, man, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm guilty of it. You know what I'm saying? I'll be up, man, because, you know, it's quiet. It's quiet, so I might be up, I might be up recording content, man, at 1 o'clock in the morning. But I make sure that I'm going to be a record at 1 o'clock in the morning that I take a nice, nice, cold, icy, good, <sighs> snoring nap from about 6 to 12. You know what I'm saying? A good six-hour nap right in there. You know what I'm saying? Throw that melatonin in, man. Plug my ears so I can't hear nothing. And, man, I'll be out. Then I'm back up. Then I can grind. But you got to get your you got to get your brain sleep before midnight. Your brain start your brain gets all of its rest before midnight. From from sundown to midnight, that's when your brain recalls. That's when your brain retools. If you ain't going to bed till after midnight, bro, your brain your brain strain like a fool. You have to get enough. Now I ain't talking about enough rest. You got to get enough sleep. I'm talking about some <sighs> that type of sleep, dog. You got to get some real sleep. And that's the main thing, because here's the thing. When you're working out, your body can't recover until you go to sleep. When you eat, your body can't really digest your food until you sleep. You have to get enough Z's, man. 
And I think that's one of the main things that we all miss out on. We don't get enough sleep, man. Most of us don't get enough sleep. Also, eliminate stress, man. You know how many times I talk to guys, man, whose lives are filled with stress. I'm talking about all kinds of stress. Man, listen, stress that I ain't never heard of. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, bro. You really got that stress in your life? That's really a part of your real life. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a part of your real life? Not your fake life, your real life. So in your real life, you're dealing with that type of stress. Come on, bro. Come on. That ain't even logical. That ain't logical. Ain't no way you should be dealing with that type of stress in your real life. I'm talking about, boy, listen, I'm talking about the life. I'm talking about the life that God bless you with. You're dealing with that kind of stress in that life? Come on, man. That don't make sense. And the thing is, most of the time, we know it don't make sense. But we just deal with it. Because we're told that as a man, we're supposed to just accept the stress of the world. As a matter of fact, I got something I want to play for y'all right quick, man. Before we head out of here, man. Uh, we got a couple more things we're going to cover. And I got something I want to play for y'all, man. And when it comes to women, man, you got to have business first relationships. Why? Because you have to know what she's willing to invest before you invest anything. You absolutely have to know what a woman is willing to invest before you invest anything. You can't afford to invest in her before you know what she's willing to invest. You just can't afford it. It is in your best interest to know exactly what a woman intends to invest in a situation. And the only way you could tell that is if you start a relationship business first. If she, Listen, if you can't start a relationship business first, she can't contribute to your business. That's pretty simple. If she can't contribute to your business, then she can't contribute to the process of your progress. You're wasting time with a woman who can't be in a business first relationship with you. And that's just the reality of it. Because the bottom line is, yeah, you may find the most beautiful woman in the world with no talent, no skill. What good is she besides a money pitch? All she is is a money drain to you. Man, I'm not finna buy into the concept of having no money drain with me, bro. I ain't with that. I ain't with it. Don't drain my money, shout out. Don't do it to me. I don't want it. I don't live my life like that. Get that to somebody else. Somebody who showed up want it. I can't do it, bro. And you know, and because here's the thing that I want y'all to understand. A relationship with you as an alpha man as an alpha king, it's always a win for the woman. You ain't going to never win in a relationship. So at the very least, you got to have a need for the woman to be around. A relationship is always a win for the woman. I didn't say sometime. I say it's always a win for the woman. And that says a lot, man. That says a lot. So I'm going to play something for y'all right quick, man. And uh, I think y'all going to enjoy this, man. I think it's a phenomenal little piece of content, man. And we give guys a hard time, man, for putting themselves in a situation, man, where they be stressed out about the interaction with women. But we got to keep in mind at the same time that all these guys weren't raised by men and don't have the alpha energy that we have, man. And so we have to be careful not to give these guys too hard a time because a lot of these guys are finding out the hard way the things that we already know about the interaction with women in modern dating and relationships, man. So I say this to y'all, man. Life is whatever you make it out to be. Yo, we all start from different levels. We all start with different tools to get ahead. Some of us start with no tools to get ahead. Some of us start from a true square one, meaning you ain't got nothing and nobody but you and the most high. And at that point, you don't even know him. He's just carrying you along. But those are the ones of us who make it the furthest. Because when we ain't got nobody but the most high, there ain't nobody to hold you back. There ain't nobody to stay in your damn way. There ain't nobody to stay in your mix. 
There ain't nobody to keep you from, from proceeding the way you need to proceed. There ain't nobody to stand in your way and make you focus on what they want you to focus on. There ain't nobody standing in your way trying to get you to stop grinding because they ain't grinding. And they know the more you grind, the more you shine, the more you leave them behind. You ain't got that if all you got in your life is you and the most high. See what I'm saying? And that's just the reality of it, man. Bud Hancock, appreciate the fireball. Brother, had to hit you again. I owe you money. Energy is right. What is your Caucasian following like? The absolute truth. Appreciate it. Uh, it's pretty decent, man. It's pretty decent, especially in Europe. You know what I'm saying? My Caucasian follower is pretty thick in Europe, man. I actually got a pretty huge following in Europe, South Africa. Got some pretty big followings, man. I got a nice following in Nigeria. Not a Caucasian following, but um, got some guys in New Zealand, man. I got, I got I, Canada for sure. Uh, got, got some nice universal following, man. International following. Afi Kingdom, my brother, salute. It's the mob, baby. Top tier to topic, salute from the 95. Boss Afi King's coming. Blessing to the chat. Respect to day one, Dr. BOA. Have a blessed weekend, King. Salute to you, my brother. Be safe out there, man. Be safe out there in the Bay Area streets, bro. Listen, man. Uh, we got something coming up for y'all, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all stay tuned for it, man. Sean B. Salute, bro. Keep up the work of the most high doc. Salute to you, Sean B. I appreciate you, bro. Elliot Watson, appreciate the dub, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all brothers coming through, man, with all the major support, man. Now, uh, Daniel Baskerville, man, appreciate the five bone. Dan say, man, we'd rather hear advice about women. This spiritual financial advice is exceedingly more important. Man, you know, we have to talk about these things, man. And uh, I think when it comes to the live stream topics, man, I think that I'm really just going to, uh, I think I'm going to really start, you know, like really, really come in here chopping it up on these live streams, man. Cause I do enough of that other stuff on the regular content. And uh, you know, there's other things we can talk about in these live shows, man. So, so look at here, brothers. Let's take a listen to this thing right here, man. I think we I think we all gonna enjoy it, man. And uh we'll come back and chop it up about it a little bit. Yeah, we'll definitely chop it up about it a little bit. So I want y'all to understand that this isn't necessarily our mindset, but it is um It is um, it's some serious, man. You know it. I guess my my perspective on this is, you know, no matter what happens, we as men still have to make sure that we do the things we need to do to make sure that we don't get caught up in trying to live our lives to please women. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Many men live their lives trying to please women only to find out that they can't be pleased. Many men define themselves by their ability to interact with women. And there's a bunch of men who tell you that on this platform or all platforms. I'm going to tell you right now, any man who tells you that you define yourself by the way you deal with women or that women define your value or that the game tells you this or that the market tells you this, man, they're a damn lie. Them boys don't know God. And if you don't know God, yeah, you apply your, your own masculinity and your own masculine value to something as fickle as the interest of a woman. Let's take a listen to this. And I mean that. Whoever done said it, they lying to you. Let's take a listen, man. What does it mean to be a man? It means that no matter what you do, it's never good enough. We're supposed to pay for dinner. We're supposed to open doors for them. We're supposed to help them carry heavy stuff. We're supposed to call them ma'am. And nowadays that's insulting. It means your mental health does not fucking matter. Male suicides make up three times the amount of female suicides. I was in the hospital for 11 days on suicide watch. They put me in counseling for maybe two months and then they just sent me on my way. And guys don't open up about their problems because nobody fucking cares. You're just told to get up and walk it off. So why even bother opening up about it, right? It means every time you meet a woman, she automatically thinks that you could possibly be a predator and they have to carry pepper spray and tasers to defend themselves against you. No matter how good we are, a woman can easily just divorce us, take half our money and our kids. If you're unhappy in a relationship, that's your own damn problem. But if a woman's unhappy in a relationship, that's also your fucking problem. Basically, you better be able to provide or you're a loser. Now, I'm going to tell y'all like this, man. In the reality of life, this is why you never apply your value to your interaction with a woman. 
You got to be a man. You got to understand that you the king. I treat a woman like a queen, but she got to realize I'm the goddamn king. She got to wrap her mind around the concept that I'm the king. So in this castle, what I say goes. She blessed enough to be in the castle, in the position she in. And many men don't take that mindset with women. They don't take the mindset that when you come into my world, this is a blessing to you. We live in a society that's telling men that you are blessed if you get this woman, if you can blah, blah, blah. If you, they take this, he who found the wife found a good thing. I mean, if you marry a woman, you found a good thing. Most of you men marry women who ain't even wives. Wives are raised to be wives. Wives are groomed to be wives. A woman who has a career ain't no wife. A woman who focuses on her own agenda ain't no wife. A woman who has who wants you to focus on the things she wants you to focus on ain't no wife. If you putting a woman through school, you ain't got no wife. You got a child. If you got a woman in your house and your house ain't clean and you ain't got no food cooked and your lunch ain't done and then she ain't in there looking good and doing everything she can to be feminine and submissive, you ain't got no woman. You got a roommate. You got a visitor. You got a guest. And many of y'all men put yourself in these situations and you live in this society where there is no man around showing you the things that manhood represents. That's why I created this platform, this platform to show you the things that true manhood and masculinity represents. And it ain't got nothing to do with no woman. It ain't got nothing to do with no woman. Truth be told, a wife's only benefit is when you want to procreate. Men only got wives when they want to procreate. Men got wives to leave a legacy. Men got wives to create generational wealth and have someone to leave it to. There is no other benefit to having a wife, dog. Unless you live in this society that convinces you that your life must be tied to your wife, that your value must be tied to her, that if she's happy, then you've done a good job. You're a great man. That's foolishness, man. And you got many men around here perpetuating that energy. That women are the prize. And I'll be honest with you. I don't want no pride to somebody else already open. Can you imagine you, you a kid on Christmas Day? You've been waiting to open your gifts and you get down there and your brother already open it. Soon as you come downstairs, you already see what it is. That fool been had it out playing with it. Can you imagine that? That's what that's the society we live in. You're supposed to be happy to get a gift that somebody else already opened. Why? You're a low-level man if you think you got you got a gift when somebody else already opened it. You're a low-level man if you go play brand new price for a used vehicle. Why are you going to pay 2021 Corvette price for a 1995 Corvette? That's what it seems like you're doing. That's the mindset that is perpetuated in the modern society. Because masculinity, true masculinity, is obsolete. It has been pushed to the background. Men have been told that you have no value. There's no need to be that anymore. That doesn't matter anymore. That doesn't matter anymore. And for, unfortunately, men are tying all of their value to their interaction with women. And then when that doesn't work out, you have nothing. Because as men, when we dedicate ourselves to something, we're not like women. When we dedicate ourselves to something, we give all of our energy to it. We go hard at it. That's why a man can lose everything in business. Let me tell y'all a story about Pepsi, man. Y'all know Pepsi is one of the, and not just the soft drink, but Pepsi is one of the biggest businesses in the world. PepsiCo is one of the biggest businesses in the world. You'll be surprised the number of companies they got under there. But do you know the first two owners of Pepsi had to file bankruptcy and sell the patent and the rights to the name, the logo and everything? Now look at it. Beating Coca-Cola in a whole bunch of different ways. Contrary to popular belief. So when you think about it, Guys don't understand that it takes a minute to build something. But the thing about it is, if you put everything you have into something, you may not bounce back. That may be it for that thing. So are you going to do that for something that can set you straight for life? Are you going to do something that can set your children straight for their lives? Your children, children? Are you going to throw all of yourself into a woman who can wake up the next day and say, okay, I'm done with this? I'm done with this. And that's real. That's what I want you men to focus on, man. Stop believing that you have to focus your energy on getting 
pleasing and keeping a woman. It's her job to please and keep you. You are the prize. Why are you the prize? Damn it, because I said you are. That's why. You were created as the prize. She was created as a helpmeet. And now some kind of way, men have decided that it's okay to be a helpmeet. How you gonna be the helpmeet to a woman, bro? That's what drains you of all your masculine energy, all your power. You've allowed yourself to become the helpmeet of a woman. And that's crazy, man. Cute dude. Appreciate the two bone, man. Ambitious host. The, yo, man, my dad kicked me out when I was 18. Now I'm 23 and making money illegally. Got my own spot in the beans and now he's trying to start beef with me. It's my birthday. I thought he would at least be happy for me, man. Bro, if here, here's another thing. That is, that's a very valuable lesson. It's the same thing as emotionally tying yourself to a woman. You can't emotionally tie yourself to the approval of anyone. Now, I know it's a little bit tougher for your dad because you're his bloodline. There's a distinct spiritual connection there, but you're just 23. Your goal is to detach yourself from it. It's going to be tough, but you got to work on it. You got to work on detaching yourself from that. You understand? You have to. And the bottom line is you have to remember, if you don't remember anything else, that no one owes you to be happy for your accomplishments. That's why you got to streamline yourself with the most high because he's the only one that's going to reward you for your accomplishments. Reward, reward you for sticking through. Reward you for not giving up. Everyone else, you can't, even, even when people seem like they're happy, you can't trust their happiness. You can't trust it. Like Flam said, you should be so happy for yourself that anyone else's happiness pales in comparison. Man, listen, I don't even, man, I don't accept birthday gifts and all that, man. People like, man, 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 what, what, man, what you want? Oh, a chick asked me, what you want for? I don't want nothing. If God woke me up that morning, you already late. You should have gave me something yesterday. It's too late now. God woke me up and gave me another chance to grind for another year. Uh-oh. It's over now. You know what I'm saying? Like, all I need is my self-motivation, bro. I look at myself. Because here's the thing that I want you to understand. You're still young, um, ambitious hustler. You're still young. So, I want, But I want you to remember this. You look at that time when you got kicked out and look at where you are right now. And you could, who was there with you every day? That was only one person that was there with you every day. I'm talking about one human person now. That was only one human being who was there with you every day, every step of the way, no matter what you dealt with. And I don't know your real name, but that was Ambitious Hustler. Wasn't nobody else there with you? Your dad the one kick you out. He wasn't there with you. So you got to keep in mind, when you're out here living this way, man, you have to understand that the experience that you have in this life it's meant for you to learn from, meant for you to learn self-love, self-respect, self-value, self-worth, self-growth, be self-made. It's meant for you to be all of that. 